This is what is likely causing your dog or cat's cancer. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. I've been asked this a lot. I mean, a client had come into the clinic, we diagnosed cancer in their dog. Sorry to tell you, Mr. Jones, but your little dog, little Blackie here, she's got lymphoma. And they're like, why? Like, what's causing it? You know, I used to say, like, you know, there's lots of things that could potentially cause it. You know, we, you know, we don't know for sure. I mean, maybe environment, maybe food, you know, maybe vaccines. But for the most part, it's like it just seems to be like luck of the draw. But is that, is that really true? Let's look at what we know. Well, to begin with, we know that cancer seems to be much higher in certain breeds. We now know that, for instance, that with the Golden Retrievers, I mean, they have the highest incidence of cancer amongst all dog breeds. What? Some studies are now saying that over 60% of all Goldens will die of cancer. Boxers, they're one of the other big breeds. When I first started in practice, that was kind of the breed we all talked about. You see a boxer, think cancer. No, you can't control your dog's genetics, but there's a whole number of other things that are, can play a huge role in whether or not your dog, your cat develops cancer. Consider some of the toxins found in food. The Clean Label Project, they've screened over a thousand different pet food products. They found some very surprising and concerning findings. The carcinogen BPA, some pet food, it had almost a thousand percent more BPA than a can of chicken soup. Lead, another known carcinogen, some pet food, it had almost 500% more lead when you compare that to cigarettes. Arsenic, pretty nasty toxin linked to cancer. Some pet food, it had nearly 2,000% more arsenic in it than what's found in cigarette tobacco. Like, what the? The type of food that you're feeding your dog, this one study looked at transitional cell carcinoma, a type of bladder cancer that Scotties are very prone to. They found that those dogs that were fed green leafy vegetables as a supplemental part of their diet had a far lower incidence of this type of bladder cancer. Once again, clear link with diet, what is going into your dog, your cat, whether or not they're gonna get cancer. How about the toxic cleaners, the environmental toxins? There are a host of studies showing a clear link between exposures to these environmental toxins, you know, these toxic herbicides, these toxic pesticides, these toxic home cleaners, and increased rates of cancer in people and in our pets. The animals are a whole lot smaller, it's one of the things they do. There are noses on the ground. You know, they're licking up a little bit of food product off the floor, also consuming some of that dust. What could be in that? You know, they're your toxic cleaner. They're gonna consume more of that. Uh, maybe, you know, these fire retardant chemicals that are added to, you know, mattresses, to couches, etc., to furniture. Some of that stuff breaks down, makes its way into the house dust. And who's consuming a bunch of that? These guys. There's a clear link between these environmental toxins, increased rates of cancer. Well, of course, we're gonna see these huge rates in our animals. We're exposing them to so much more. Flea and tick medication, is there a link to these in cancer in our dogs and cats? This one study, it looked at the incidence of a type of mouth cancer called squamous cell carcinoma. Fortunately, unfortunately, fairly common in our cats, super difficult to treat. It's a pretty nasty type of mouth cancer. And one of the interesting findings that they found is that for animals that were treated with, you know, these like topical flea and tick medications, things that, you know, cover your animal, that your animal then grooms him or herself. So these toxins are gonna concentrate in, in their mouth, mean they have a much higher incidence then of developing these cancers. And it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, you're covering your dog, your cat with these, topical insecticides, your animal ingests them. It's gonna concentrate in their mouth. Makes sense, and sure enough, you know, there's a study saying that. But what is interesting? If you were to use a shampoo, all of a sudden you saw this dramatic lower rates in the incidence of this cancer. Hmm. Which goes to say that one, yes, there's a big link between these insecticides and cancer, Two, there's some simple ways to avoid it. Just don't use that topical insecticide, that 
toxic stuff, use something far more benign like a shampoo. Like, makes huge sense to me. Like, how about spay and neuter? You know, historically in the past, you know, I would always say to clients, like you want to neuter your dog early, you know, decrease the likelihood of him to having an enlarged prostate, obviously can kind of develop testicular cancer. The other big thing was spay the female dogs. We want to make sure that they're spayed before they come into heat, decrease the number of heat cycles, meaning far less likely chance of them ever developing mammary gland cancer. At least that's what I thought, right? Spay new early, decrease the likelihood of these cancers. Turns out, not really the case. They've seen, for instance, that with the golden retrievers, if you perform early spay and neuter, you're seeing a five to 15% increase in the likelihood of them getting certain cancers, such as lymphoma, such as hemangiosarcoma, such as bone cancer, osteosarcoma, or skin cancer, mast cell tumors. For many of the dogs then, you've got a mid to larger sized dog, it is now suggested that in many cases, you delay having them spay or neutered to at least a year of age. What caused cancer, doc? Well, there's a whole bunch of different possibilities. No, you can't always just put your finger on the one thing. And you know, I like to think about it more as like the threshold, right? There's a bunch of things that can cause abnormal cell growth. You expose your dog to one or two things, eh, could be okay. But you know, you start keep feeding that chronic unhealthy food. You expose them to an array of different toxins. You look at, you know, you repeatedly vaccinate them. Right. Then you can run into issues. And preventively, I always suggest feeding a good quality, complete balanced immune support supplement, you know, such as mine, Ultimate Canine Advanced Health Formula, or my cat supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets of the Causes of Cancer in Our Dogs and Cats. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.